After starting to get into classic survival horror last year, the announcement of a new game in the genre, Crow Country, which is set in a spooky abandoned theme park, had me super hyped. Well, it's finally here, comes out tomorrow, I played it, and it's a super fun time. While it may not be the scariest game I've ever played, the map is well designed, the puzzles are fun, and the story is kinda weird. It took me between 6 and 7 hours to beat, though I only got B rank, so I might just have to go back and try for the coveted S rank. As you would expect, the story is told through a little bit of dialogue and a bunch of notes you can find around the park. But unlike in just about every other game that does this, I actually wanted to read each bit of lore and all the information I could find. Plus, you never know when you might stumble across the answer to a puzzle that's got you stumped. You play as Mara Forrest, a girl who's ventured into the closed-down Crow Country theme park in search of its missing owner, Edward Crow. All in all, the game isn't too tough. There are maybe a handful of puzzles that might have you scratching your head for a few minutes, and most of the combat can either be avoided or you can just run into the next room, get your bearings, and then go back and fight off all those enemies that you missed. I remember not being a huge fan of the combat in the demo, and I actually didn't mind it here, so I'm wondering if controls were tweaked slightly or if I just got used to it, I'm not sure. You can also turn off combat completely, which is how I'm going to play through my second run because it seems like the ranking system has nothing to do with that side of the game. Just heals used, hints spent, secrets found, and lives used. There is a hint system that came in handy when I had totally forgotten what I was supposed to be doing. You can go up to one of these fortune telling machines and use one of 10 hints that'll help you find your next key item and progress in the game. Generally, you'll either come across locked doors or contraptions that are missing a piece, like a crank or a battery. Do a little poking around, find something useful, figure out where it goes, and repeat. Exploring was my favorite part of Crow Country because you never knew what room you'd stumble into next. Each area of the park has a different theme, like fairy tale town and haunted hilltop, with rooms to match their different vibes. And this really is a vibey game, from the sound effects and music, the save rooms, which have Mara stare intensely into a fire in order to save, and just the fact that everything is a prop, like you're on a movie set or in a diorama, with secret passageways and hidden staff areas, mysterious levers, curtains, hidden panels. There are a couple jump scares that did get me pretty good, but the freakiest part of the game was definitely these weird backroom areas because they're so out of place. Yeah, you can poke around an old arcade or a haunted house attraction, but these plain tan walls, they'll get to you. In some ways, Crow Country is almost like a parody of a survival horror game, but not in a cheesy way, if that makes sense. You do need to pay attention to your surroundings, and there are staff memos hanging up all throughout the park that will sometimes just straight up tell you where someone placed an item that you need. And just other general staff complaints like guests breaking or stealing things, doors that aren't up to code, that sort of thing. Even some pretty funny ones like this one that says, we should change the code, way too easy to guess. And you'll never guess what the code was. Well, actually you probably will, and that's the whole point. There is a lot to remember, and you'll probably forget where you're supposed to be going at least once or twice, so you can go back and read every note you've found in any of the game's save rooms. I like how the save fire in each of these rooms takes a different form, from a moody fireplace to a blazing oil barrel fire, even the fiery surface of the sun. If you're into secret hunting and don't want to miss anything, you can find a map that shows you where each secret is located, which is super helpful, not having to just blindly run around and hope that you'll find something interesting. I also found it super helpful to start writing stuff down that I wanted to come back to later, something I hadn't really done before when playing a game, but something that I would highly recommend. Now, I've basically been gushing here about how much I love Crow Country, but there is one thing that sticks out to me as getting pretty annoying by the end of the game, and that is all the traps that are lying around. At first, there will only be a handful of monsters that you can pretty easily avoid. As you keep going, new and more powerful types spawn, along with different traps like falling chandeliers and crows that spray poisonous gas at you. 
I feel like this was a little bit overdone, but there are a lot of med packs and ammo in the game, so I guess it all works out in the end. This one runs great on Steam Deck, no issues there, and no issues on PC either. I definitely would recommend a controller to play with, and you can either go for D-pad tank controls, or just use the left stick to walk around and make your life a whole lot easier. If you like survival horror and don't mind a bit of a silly spin on the genre, then I think Crow Country is a great game with a pretty compelling story, some funny moments, and extremely satisfying exploration. And even if you've never been into horror games, I'd urge you to give it a go without the combat, because the puzzles alone are enough to keep things interesting, which is something I was a little worried about going in. And as I continue on my road to S rank, here are some other games you might want to check out too.